Now that 2023 is officially behind us, I'd like to take a closer look at a few budget graphics cards to see where they stand as we step into 2024 in terms of performance and viability. One card that I wanted to revisit is the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1660. I reviewed this GPU a few months ago, but I felt like I didn't do it justice by not testing it in a few more modern titles. Since that review, I've also upgraded my test bench to ensure I can squeeze every bit of performance out of the GTX 1660. Before diving into the details, I want to make it clear to viewers that my goal in reviewing older components like the GTX 1660 is to share what they are still capable of for people who already own or are consider picking up these sort of parts for a budget build. While newer graphics cards offer better future proofing and enhanced features, the GTX 1660 could still be a valuable option for the right price on the used market. The GTX 1660 is a mid-range graphics card from 2019. It's built on the Turing architecture like other 16 series and RTX 20 series cards cards. It features the TU-116 core built with a 12 nanometer process with 1,408 shading units, 88 texture mapping units, and 48 render output units. Base and boost clock speeds are 1530 and 1785 MHz respectively. Unlike the more popular and slightly faster 1660 Super, which uses GDDR6 video memory, the 1660 non-Super has 6 GB of GDDR5 memory on a 192-bit bus width. The GTX 1660 is pretty power efficient with a 120 watt TDP and a power supply recommendation of at least 300 watts. It supports feature level 12.1 for the DX12 API and features a solid Turing video encoder which has decent potential for some light streaming. Originally priced at 219 US dollars, the GTX 1660 is now available for around 100 to 120 US dollars on the used market from what I've seen in the states. While local sellers may offer even better deals, the card generally maintains a pretty consistent price. The specific GTX 1660 I'll be testing is my MSI Gaming X model with a 4% factory overclock to its boost frequency. I appreciate the design for this specific aftermarket cooling unit from MSI with features like a metal backplate and RGB lighting. In terms of potential limitations, the 6GB of video memory might pose challenges in some modern titles. As the card's initial intention was for 1080p gaming, all testing today will be done in 1080p, although the card could potentially handle 1440p in some easier to run titles. My test bench features the 6-core 12-threaded Ryzen 5 5600X on a B550 motherboard paired with 32GB of 3600MHz CL16 DDR4 memory. Windows 10 runs on a Gen 3 NVMe SSD with game storage primarily on that same SSD or a separate SATA SSD. Starting with Counter-Strike 2 in 1080p with the very high quality preset, I observed an average of about 125 FPS and a 77 FPS 1% low during a practice bot match on the Dust 2 map. Moving on to Fortnite with DX12, high preset and epic view distance, I achieved an average of 106 FPS and a 1% low of 14 FPS. For esports games, the GTX 1660 would pair well with high refresh rate displays and more performance based settings for a pretty competitive experience. In Red Dead Redemption 2, at 1080p with the preset slider set to the middle and texture quality set to high, I saw an average frame rate of 45 FPS and a 1% low of 36 FPS for an overall stable experience. The GTX 1660 handles this title well and offers flexibility in configuring graphic settings. Personally, I have no problem playing Red Dead 2 at sub 60 FPS if it means I'm getting a bit more visual quality. Continuing the testing with Horizon Zero Dawn at 1080p with the high preset, the GTX 1660 averaged a respectable 73 FPS and a 1% low of 26 in the built-in benchmarking tool. In-game with these rainy conditions brought the average down to 64 FPS and a 1% low of 55 FPS. Once again, the GTX 1660 proved capable, providing users with the flexibility in configuring their graphic settings to their preferred type of experience. In Forza Horizon 5, tested at 1080p with the high preset and TAA enabled, frame rates were 85 and 71 for average and 1% lows respectively, providing very stable gameplay for this well-optimized racing game from 2021. Moving on to Cyberpunk 2077, at 1080p high settings with no frame scaling, the built-in benchmark resulted in an average of 46 FPS and a 1% low of 37 FPS. In-game testing improved on those numbers with a 51 FPS average and 44 FPS 1% low. While this performance is good for Cyberpunk, enabling FSR in this case could likely increase averages comfortably over 60 FPS while maintaining decent visual quality. 
Moving on to some 2023 releases, Hogwarts Legacy in 1080p at the Ultra preset with FSR set to balance resulted in an average of 63 FPS and a 1% low of 31. The interior of the castle ran extremely smoothly while outdoor environments struggled a bit more, causing drops and a lack of frame stability. Baldur's Gate 3, a relatively optimized and easy to run game, was tested at 1080p at the Ultra preset. I observed an average of about 64 FPS and 1% low of 48. The GTX 1660 has no problem running this title pretty smoothly. An AC Mirage, using the benchmarking tool at 1080p medium preset, resulted in a solid average of 66 FPS and a 54 FPS 1% low. Some screen tearing and delays in rendering textures were noticed, but these issues are likely not detrimental for most individuals. Finally, running Starfield at 1080p with the lowest preset unsurprisingly resulted in the least stable and worst overall performance in the games tested today. In a pretty intensive area, the GTX 1660 averaged 53 FPS with an 8 FPS 1% low. While visuals looked rough at these settings, it could still be a playable output for many, especially in the less intensive locations in this game. Despite being about 5 years old, the GTX 1660 still offers value if obtained at a good price. It handles some of the newest titles in 1080p with reasonable graphic settings in most cases. If you already have this card and it meets your needs, you may be able to hold on to it for a bit longer before considering an upgrade. For those thinking about picking one up and understand its limitations, finding one for about 80 US dollars or less on the used market can offer good value. However, in my opinion, there are a ton of better value options available on the used market right now. The list of value cards is pretty extensive and I'm sure most individuals have suggestions of their own which I welcome comments about. One of my personal recommendations would be the GTX 1070. It will likely come at a similar price to the 1660 with the same sort of feature limitations. However, it's more powerful and has an additional 2GB of VRAM on board. For someone who understands the limitation of this older hardware, the 1070 or even 1070 Ti might be a good buy. Another used recommendation would be the RX 5700 XT, which I've seen for as low as $150 US on eBay. The 5700 XT is criminally underrated and it can even be an entry level 1440p card for a lot of mainstream titles. But like I said, if you have any budget GPU suggestions of your own, I would definitely like to hear them. Anyways, I plan to test more budget components this year and aim to be on a more consistent upload schedule. If you enjoy this sort of content and want to see some super budget builds in the future, consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. As always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or suggestions. Thank you.